Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And this week I'm back with a sort of a kind of a remake of a video I did last, last month. Now, last month I turned an unfortunate um, 12 by 12 card that I wasn't very keen on the design of into um, a, an arty background which I then made arty ephemera from and this is actually the arty ephemera it's still in the box I put it in so it's probably only a month ago I did the video um, I do need more of these however that's not the driving force as to why I'm doing it today now um, I had a comment a comment from Daniela Hartens Veed, maybe I can't pronounce the last name. Daniela Harten Veid, V V E I D. You will know who you are, Diana. Anyway, uh, Daniela. Uh, Daniela said, "Would it be possible to show how to do that using ice blue and olive?" Now, um, I'm assuming Daniela means using olive and ice blue as the the final colours. I can't imagine that she's expecting the whole thing to be ice blue and green. I thought, okay, they're not a colour combination I would normally use. Um, apparently Daniela loves that colour combination, so I'm eager to see what, what it looks like together. So I thought, right, let's have a go. There was also another comment saying um, something along the lines of, why is it every single person starts in the top right hand corner and only does straight lines? Um, to me, I'm OCD and I'm very methodical and probably too regimented in the way I work sometimes. And I find I get better effects if I go horizontal or vertical. However, I wasn't aware I started in the top right or top left corner. So I'm going to try. I forgot to write down the lovely lady's name. I'm so sorry. I'm going to try and break a little bit from tradition. I might do the odd diagonal or a curved line, but we'll see how long that lasts. Anyway, so that, that was my notes for myself. So I've got a bit of unfortunate paper by me. I pulled out a few postcards that are in the making. They sort of kind of need other layers. So as I did in the last video, I will, if I've got spare paint on the go, I'll add them to this. We're going to be using stencils. We're going to be using acrylics. We're doing pretty much the same thing. I'm not going to doodle in this one, or I don't think I'm going to doodle in this one, and I'm not going to cut the final piece out, but I'm going to do so. I'm going to keep it as an arty background, and then when I do the um, Brayer off journal I'm planning to use them in, I then have this to cut up. So let's talk about the colour. So olive, I'm assuming, um, is olive green. Um, quite an earthy colour, obviously, it's olive green. So I'm going to keep that to one side just so I always remember it. Um, ice blue. I don't actually have ice blue, but I do have sky blue and I have a pale chalk paint, which is blue. And I pulled out some white because I have a feeling ice blue is probably quite a light blue. That's the best I can do. I've been through every single paint and ink that I've got and I don't have anything called ice blue. So forgive me on that. I'm trying to work the best I can with it. Um, and then I've got my store card, hotel card, pass key, whatever you want, because I do the whole process with that. I also have a sponge, and I've actually got the right size sponges this time to actually do the sponging technique with stencils. Now, because I'm going to struggle slightly, I pulled in my colour wheel. Now, I absolutely love using colour wheels. And if you're ever hesitant about using colour wheels, get one. They're not very expensive. This is my favourite. It's by a company called So Easy. S-E-W-E-Z. Is there a website there's not a website on it um i believe this is for quilting this version and i like it because for an example i can hold the aperture over my color and find the nearest color to it so for me that tells me this sits within that grouping um the blue there you go i can find something that's close to it it's, it's, I find it really easy anyway. It's a lot of a helping out. Sometimes if I'm being indecisive, I like this. So if I've got olive green here in this grouping, then if I turn this, you're going to find that the complementary is this, which I would never have thought that complemented that. But I'm willing to learn. Um, so, and I always know that the blues are normally opposite to the warmer colours. So I'm looking at this sort of range to think about using. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be something that's going to be nice to 
work on. Now, if you hear any slurping, I've got a cup of tea. And I've got a cup of tea because this is... I can't remember what video this is I've done today. But I definitely need a cup of tea along the way. So let's get started. Let's get on with it. Let's start, stop the chopsing. So if I'm using, I'm going to cover this up. I need to cover it up with something that's opaque. Um, <clears throat> there's white, definitely. Um, I've got the buttermilk I really quite like. I do have a colour called Camel. So I think between these two, I should be able to conceal quite a bit of this. Now, um, I'm not really sure where I'm going with this. I have to be honest, because as I said, it's not my colour scheme. But do you know what? It's really good to be challenged sometimes with your colour choice. See, I immediately started at the top, didn't I? See, that young lady was right. I do do that. Well, apparently all of us do that, so <clears throat> let's do some diagonals then. There you go. Yeah, isn't it weird? I just, I don't realise what habits I have because they're just part of me now. But I suppose there's nothing wrong with a habit. So as long as it's a good one and it's not detrimental to anyone else, I'm not going to worry too much. Right, I'm going to come in with some of the buttermilk. One of my favourite colours. I need to order more of this because I'm almost certain I'm going to run out of this very shortly because I tend to use it quite often. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to cover up the trees. Um, I can't imagine trees featuring in my final design. Um, it's, it's not a Christmas journal. It's not a wildlife journal. It's not a forestry journal, it's it's kind of an arty party sort of journal. So, <clears throat> sorry, that's something stuck in my throat. That's better, good lug of tea will cure anything. So I think I want to, before I start getting too muddy and dark, I'm going to put some white on here as well, just to give myself a bit of a blend colour. So... Trying to get this background into an interesting shape before I even start. Now I'm only putting a thin layer on and I'm using a store card or this is my Yorkshire card before the virus got hold of me and I no longer go to London anymore so there you go. Um, I would say you could do this with a, just a stiff piece of card if you chose. You don't necessarily have to use a store card or a plastic card. You could even use a palette knife, I suppose, to do this sort of thing. It depends on, use whatever you've got. So, <clears throat> right, I think that's enough of the first layer of something on there. See, I'm going on a diagonal. I am. I'm even trying to curve it a little bit. So, we've got our base layer of paint down here. What I need to do now is just lift this out the way a second. Scrape this off here. Um, let's grab one of the postcards and see whether I can't just add something of interest to this postcard that wasn't of interest before. And as you know, this is how I just build up layers upon layers on my postcards. I just use whatever I've got and when I start stenciling, I'll stencil pieces onto it. But I don't waste paint, guys. I don't waste paint unless... I have no option to waste paint because there's a time constraint or there's something else on the go. So let's just stick those over there. Right. This needs a little bit of a wipe down. Um, as you know by now, I tend not to use wet wipes because I'm trying to contribute a little bit to saving the planet. And if I can do just one thing, then that's one less thing to worry about. So I use old face cloths and they get washed regularly. They aren't grey, they are stained to death. But you know what, they're fine, they work, and I love them, and I feel so much better for trying to do something different. Okay, so I've got that on there. Now, when I looked at the colour wheel, you were looking at this sort of colour range. So I'm thinking that sits more with my permanent crimsons, magentas, that sort of feel. So let's see if I've got any of those on the go. Okay, I've got a permanent magenta and I've got a wine red. I think the wine red may be slightly too dark, but I'm willing to add it to add some tones onto this or hues or shades. And someone did send me a wonderful 
<clears throat> a wonderful chart to tell me what was a tone, what was a hue, what was a shade and all that lot. And I meant to print it out. Do you think I did? Yeah, that's right. I didn't print it out, did I? So again, I tend to turn my work as I'm working. See, look at what on the diagonal there. I'm trying, I'm trying, not there's anything wrong with the way I work, um, but it is good to challenge yourself occasionally. So that's it, I get a bit of red up to the corners or the edges. <clears throat> Sorry about the throat clearing, I don't know what's what's going on. So it could be the milk in my tea actually thinking about it. There you go, I hadn't thought about that. I don't normally drink anything while I'm working on screen, but I guess I guess that's probably the reason why. Right, this is permanent magenta, which has got more of a punch of pink to it. So a little bit of oh, that looks like it's a little more transparent than the other one, which is a good thing. This does feel like a very weird base to eventually be putting green on. I hope it doesn't, whoops, I lost it. I hope it doesn't end up looking Christmas, which is what I'm kind of worried about. Right, okay, well, so I believe my color wheel and I've, I've done what my color wheel said. So, right, now I think I need to add some lighter to this just to give myself a bit of variety in the base of this. And I think I need another gulp of tea. I do think I want to come in with a little bit of white. Just to maybe pull a few streaks down here. And take some of this down a little bit. I'm still not convinced that Those two colours are colours I'm, I'm likely to use together, but I'm, I'm willing to play the game. Now, when I'm working and thinking about something as specific as the colours that I'm using here being um, olive and ice blue, something to, I need to remember is green is made of blue and yellow. So I could effectively add a yellow into this and it wouldn't be a problem. Okay, now blue is a primary, so therefore no two colours make up blue. So blue is blue, but I can add a yellow to this. And I'm wondering whether I've got a subtle shade of yellow that might actually pull this together a little bit more. Okay, I've got a transparent yellow here, and I know it's transparent, but it's got quite a bit of a punch to it. And also I've looked and I've found nickel azo yellow. Now that actually... Looking at those two colours together, I think that might be a, a good a good thing to have in with this. And it's a transparent, as I can see by the swatch on the front. So I think it's time that I put a little bit of yellow into this. Let's take that lump of old paint off of there. Off there, so not off of. I don't know what off of is. So a little bit of yellow. a little bit of this it's a little bit on the on the baby poo side to be honest with you um, interesting color uh, so let's start with the brighter color and see where I take this okay I don't I don't mind that let's see if I can do a couple of diagonals just to capture different areas I have to be conscious that I've got to keep going all the way to the edge because there's no guarantees that whatever I cut this into is going to stop and not expose the edges of this. So uh, okay, I, I'm I'm not averse to what's happening on this page now. Um, again, I wouldn't have put these colours together, but that's okay. Now let's go in with this one that looks a little bit like a message from a baby's diaper, to be honest with you. Oh, that's very pungent, isn't it? Okay, that that was that was a bit of a surprise. 
I, I didn't know. I don't even know that I've used this colour before. Right. I'm very much thinking this needs to calm down a little bit or else it's going to get way out of control and wacky. So let's bring in another postcard and see whether I can put a little something onto it. I'm not sure this is adding a lot to this postcard, but it added something. So um, I'm wondering whether these colours actually dry paler, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's OK. It's um, I'm not hugely worried, but I am thinking that it's getting a bit intense for what I'm thinking of. But I need to now start thinking of we've now obliterated the background, which which was my aim. Um, I think now I need to think about possibly adding things that are going to calm this down, push it into the background and then bring in some stencils and start working with stencils to get to the point where I'll be happy with it. Um, yes. I'm tempted to reach for white, but I actually think white is the wrong colour at the moment. I'd like to add the blue, but if I add the blue to that yellow, I think it's possibly going to go greenish on me. And granted, we're having green in here eventually anyway with the olive, but not 100% certain on this. I'm wondering whether I want to pull some of that buttermilk in again, because buttermilk obviously has a touch of the yellow to it, which might just even this out, even the playing field. So here's that buttermilk again. I'm wondering whether I even want to... Something I did on the last one was I didn't actually use the the plastic for everything so I might just come in and actually just dab this on here just to add bits of texture in here and I mean visual texture obviously because this isn't real texture well not not texture that I could run my fingers over and go oh that's texture right so we, we've got this far and as yet, I haven't used any of the required paint colours. So I think, in honour to the challenge, I should start using some of those colours now. So I'm quite happy I did that, actually. That, that sort of broke it up ever so slightly and started adding a little more pattern to this. I think I might want to put a bit of the chalk blue on here. Just the odd streak. And... And I'm going to be doing it vertical and horizontal at this point. Right. Not sure I'm going to need all of that, but... I'm going to bring some of this in, just so that I'm beginning to establish the beginnings of blue within this piece because remember we're supposed to be finishing with olive green and ice blue although I don't have ice blue so I think I'm going to leave that as that uh, push that up there and see if I've got a postcard or two that could do with a touch of something on it Don't mind that, looks like a couple of islands. There you go. So, actually, I've got a blue one here as well. This could do with a little bit of something. Another layer. And here's one more that needs a little bit of something. I'm glad to have got rid of that reddish one on that because this, this was not a good colour combination when I. When I did this postcard, I was like, hmm, that doesn't work. And sometimes colour combinations don't work. Um, the important thing is to recognise when something isn't working 
and then make a decision about it. Do, do I stop? Do I change tack? Do I try and rescue it? Do I cover it up and start again? Um, all very valid questions and ones I ask myself on a very regular basis because although a lot of the time it appears that my colour combinations are good, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they do not come into being. Right. <clears throat> I think now is about time I want to start bringing a few stencils into play here, um, starting with the larger stencil possibly and working to a smaller one. So, right, where's my book of stencils gone? Let's just push that up to the top again. I don't know, I'll pull it back down. Let's have a little look. Let's go from the opposite end because I'll start at the front and go to the back. Let's start at the back and go to the front. Okay. That might add some touches of interest later on. Right, that's Cascading Cogs by PM Artist Studio. I found that one too large last time. Didn't want that, didn't want that. No, Cascading Cogs, because that's very similar to it. I have no overall vision for this one, so I'm, I'm just trying to work out what I think might work and I'm thinking if I keep it like that's quite a handy one to use that cellular membrane um, I tend to um, go for random shapes when I don't know exactly what I want to put on here so I think that's a bit too big I wonder, maybe, I'm just going to pull out the Tracely Mandalas, just because I use them a lot, obviously, because you can see they're absolutely caked in paint, but they're great for putting interest into sections. Right, I don't want to use that one because I always reach for that one. Let's see what else we've got on the go here. Right, these are some of mine from the good old days when I did stencils prior. I'm looking for stencils that have got small design to them because I have no idea what this is going to end up as and I think it'd be more interesting if there's smaller designs within it. I quite like this one. I, I can't remember where I got this from. I'm not even sure whether I might have got this with a craft magazine as a freebie. Don't want to put flowers on it because I don't know that that's the theme I'm going to be going for. Don't want to put big numbers on it. Let's just stick with what we've got and see what I come up with. Right, so this is not dry in any way, shape or form. I know that because it's going to start, well, it started lifting off my fingers already. So I have to be a little bit careful with what I do. So now when I do um, stenciling, I tend to buy these big sponges. My local um, pound shop does three of these sponges for a pound. So, and that's what I do. And I just get them, I'll just cut them into chunks. And then I'll use those chunks to paint with. Um, sometimes I throw them in a bowl, a bowl of water afterwards and wash them. Sometimes I don't. I, I can't say I'm consistent in what I do. Um, I just find it's easier to do this than actually using a paintbrush for me. So, so that's what I'm using. So right, where am I up to? So I think I want to add some green to this and I think I want to use this cellular membrane for the olive because um, it's got quite an organic feel to it. So a little bit of, that's a very dark green. Okay, and I'm just getting my sponge and I'm dabbing it in and almost dabbing it all off again. And then I'm gonna come in and just pounce this up and down on the sponge, um, on the stencil, trying to put some color through it. I would rather build up layers of color than go in with too thick an amount on my sponge. And then what you find is it seeps underneath by doing it and repeating the tapping motion, you'll find you'll get cleaner designs. I really am risking it here because the paints underneath are not, not dry. 
So I'm hoping that the stencils don't start lifting up the paintwork that it's resting on. If you're doing this at home, I would say just go make yourself a cup of tea while it dries off for a few minutes. Uh, because otherwise you'll find that the stencils will start to lift off the wet surface of the paint underneath it. I think I want a little bit over here. I do tend to group things in threes um, and I think a lot of us do that. I think a lot of us group in threes. Right, so that's given me some interest on there. I think I'm going to put this over to one side to be washed. <clears throat> Right. Now, when I was looking at this earlier on, this was sort of my colour band. Actually, that was sort of my colour band, wasn't it? Now, I've got hints of that colour in here. The yellow wasn't in here, but I, I took the yellow on board because it's part of the green, green section of this. I'm thinking I'd like to put some terracotta or something around here um see if i've got something that's almost that color okay i've got some yellow okra here which is i mean i did have terracotta but i think the yellow okra is probably a kinder color um and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the same sponge because i don't i don't mind it being slightly dirty and i'm going to bring in the cogs or was it gears? I can't remember what they were called now. And I'm just going to come in just to add a little something, just visual texture. I'm not looking to get the overall shape of the gears and cogs. I'm actually just looking to get interest from their innards, if that's a nice way to put it. Just to give me something in there. Pull that off without it sticking. Do you see what I mean? There's just there's shapes beginning to emerge in the background. So let's pop that one in the middle a bit, I think, because I've got this big expanse in there. Now I'm not overly bothered by the fact that the stencil's picking up and dropping down because it's picking up and dropping down in exactly the same space. If I was actually um, doing texture paste or something through this, I would possibly stick the stencil down first and then work my way through it. Now effectively I'm calling this a stencil but it is actually a mask um, but I'm using it as a stencil which is probably why I'm referring it to a stencil. And a little bit in here I think just just maybe that big cog there just just to something. And I think this can be retired and I think this sponge might be heading towards retirement as well. Okay. And I think what I might do is I might use this one to add the whites in. Now I'm going to leave that sat there because I may use that. But I'm going to use another bit of sponge because it is white. And I don't want it overly contaminated. Doing exactly as I did before. A little bit of the paint down. Put it on and knock it back off again. And I'm going to come in and put some of this on there. Now I'm not looking for a whole panel of this, but I am looking for some of it. Now, the added thing that I quite like about this is I'm actually putting this stencil over the cogs that I've just done. So what's going to happen is it's going to pick up some of that color and it's going to turn it from a white to a different version of the brown which is interesting to me. Off you come. See, it's just giving me little bits now. Because this is a very, it's a diamond shape, I'm going to keep it in the correct orientation for the diamonds, or else it's going to really jar on the eye when you look at it. I think I'm going to do one bit as if it's coming off the edge here. Oh, 
come on up here come right well while that's deciding about itself for a second let's bring in another postcard and see if i can't add a little something to a postcard while i've got the paint on the go and the stencil on the go I'm very rarely looking for the perfect imprint or the perfect impression. I'm usually just looking for elements. And that'll do. I'll add a little bit to that. Let's pull in this one again, which I wanted to take away the reds on it. Just work in a circular motion from the inside outwards just because I know I'm running out of paint on this sponge and that'll just give me an area of interest there you go just an area of interest on there so right let's leave that sponge there this I think at the moment can go into the wash up area Right, now I've got this on the go. Now I am a little worried that it looks a bit uninteresting, should I say. It's it's not it's not hitting me as I'm not in love with it, let's put it that way. Um I do feel in fairness so I need to add some more blue to it because this blue has turned a little bit greeny. And I think this sky blue may just help the cause a little bit. Um, see what colour it actually comes out at. It's quite a thin colour blue. I'm wondering whether I need to add a little bit of white to that just to play around with it. might be better well, let's just take one of these and see if I can't add an element of that to this Daniela I'd be very interested to see something that you've done with these two colors purely out of interest because I obviously it's outside my comfort zone these these two colors and I'm not used to using them and I'm struggling to see what it is that you you find wonderful about the colour combination. Which is brilliant because the thing is that that's what I love is the human race is full of individuals. And as individuals we each have our own preferences and tastes. And, and it's good to be pushed outside your comfort zone sometimes. Especially with things like design, shape and colour. Because you can always discover something new about your artwork or yourself. Um, <clears throat> and, and for me, I think this is one of those exercises. Um, I'm trying to make it work uh, only because I'm trying to discover is, is there a secret colour combination to this that I'm missing? Is there something I'm not doing now? Granted, in all of this... We have to remember I'm not using the exactly the right colour paints. I'm, I'm trying to make do with them. Okay, it's getting more interesting. It is getting more interesting. I feel this area here needs some help. It needs lightening up. Right. I've dug out a couple of oldies, so good old bubble wrap. You know me and bubble wrap. Love me bubble wrap. I use it quite a lot. Um, I'm thinking I want to pull that back with a light colour. And to me, the lightest colour I've got is white. So we're going to go with white. Let's just move that white around a little bit. Now I know the white's mixing in with the blue. Can you see this? You can see this. I suddenly realise have I done this whole video without you being able to see what I'm doing. Bubble wrap comes free in your packaging and I absolutely love it and I use it all the time. Right. 
I think because I'm on home turf now with the bubble wrap, um, I'm beginning to feel a little happier, should we say, about this. Let's just clean up some of this onto another postcard, just to give it a little something. It's probably not improved that in the slightest, but you never know. I never know what the layers are going over the top. Right, so leave that to one side. So, right. It is getting very busy. But I'm beginning to find it interesting. There doesn't seem to be enough olive green on here. And I'm wondering whether that's what I'm missing. Right. Let's let's pull some olive green in. Put some olive green down on this area where all of the lighter paints have been. Let's move it around a bit with with a sponge. So there's some there. Now what I'm going to use, I was going to sort of a spruce colour, is I've got a bit of this plastic, and you can find this in your craft shop. Um, normally where the stuff for cross stitch is. And it gives a nice, a nice texture without being too bold. So I think this might add another interest piece for me. I don't know if you see. Can you see that? Gives you that really fine grid work. Um, it comes in shapes as well, but I just buy it by the sheet and just use it as I see it. Okay, that's giving some interest. Right, that's getting there. This again needs another wash. Okay, I'm I'm not 100% sold on this. It's looking it's looking okay. It's not looking fabulous. I wonder if I want to add Let's turn my plate around so I've got some cleaner areas to work on. I'm wondering whether I want to introduce a metallic. Okay, I had silver and I didn't like it. I've got this, it's sort of a gold, sort of copper, bronzy sort of mix. It's just basically the ends of tubes of paint and I put them in there. So let's see if I can find myself a palette knife. Um, I'm thinking of adding that as a metallic to some of these areas. So let's take some of this out of here. Yeah, this, this is an amalgamation of, I found that I had two or three half, well not half even, um, more than half empty uh, tubes of, everyone was called a gold, but they were all very different, so. So basically, I just emptied them all into one pot and went, right, let's just call this gold. But to me, it looks more coppery anyway. So I'm going to come in with the medium size of the mandala. And I'm going to do the same technique, but being careful not to pick up too much of this. I come in and dab the colour through this. I'm hoping because the paint underneath isn't overly dry that I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to lift this mandala up and find that I've actually just lifted everything underneath it up as well because that would be a little disheartening. I'm trying to catch the edge of it. Okay, there's not a lot on there. I'm not sure whether I'm improving this or making it worse, to be honest with you. Worst case scenario, I come in and I just put white all over it and start again. Which I don't really want to do, to be honest. Because I think it's a lesson and it's a good lesson. I 
I want four, one in each corner. So I'm going to concentrate on just the middle of this one. And maybe put a bit over here because this bit really bothers me. some left on this sponge I'm just going to come in and add patches just break things up a little bit anywhere where there's too much of a straight line or too much of an area that I'm not keen on I'm not sure it's hideous I mean nothing is hideous someone will always love something somewhere Hmm. I wish this was alive because I would actually ask you what you guys think. I'm not hating it. That's the whole thing. I think the trouble is it is just so different to what I normally do that I'm struggling because in my mind I think I'm comparing it to stuff. I do think it's missing drama though. So let me just put all of this by. So now normally to add drama to something I would add black but I think black would be the wrong choice here but I do have this paint called Ashfeltum um, which is quite a dark brown it's squeezes as you can see it's like quite a dark chocolate brown and I've got a feeling that might help but I need to find a stencil that's going to give me something that will join all of that together um numbers and words is wrong dots there's just so much going on on that i don't want to do dots i wonder I'll pull this out but not necessarily use it i'm just gonna leave it leave it in my mind's eye can you see this you can pretty much see it okay right I always use this, but I think for once that pattern is too small. Don't want to add leaves. Letters is a no. This is kind of another version of this. So maybe we'll have those two out. Now, I could always go for this one, but I always go for this one. So I'm going to ignore it. See if I can challenge myself to do something differently. This... Diana Reevely one is interesting, but I'm not sure. I love numbers and letters, but I don't want to put numbers and letters. I don't want to put bricks on there. I don't want to do anything that's too obvious. I wonder. <clears throat> Let's pull this out because it's got some movement to it. It might be big enough to tie some of the areas together. There wasn't anything else in here that I think really... A lot of these designs are just too blocky. They're too big for what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something a little more delicate. Sorry, I know it, I'm, not, I'm not being overly productive today, but I just... Struggling slightly. Let's just say that, struggling slightly. I think we're going to try dealing with what I've just pulled out because I've got a feeling that might actually work. So we've got the original here. I'm on screen. I'm on screen. Now, I'm thinking this might work, but I'm worried that it looks a bit like a draft to me. And I think if I've got that in my brain, who's this by? Sweet Poppy Stencils, this is by, and see, thank you for writing on the on the stencil, because I never remembered. It's SP6-109. Um, it reminds me of a giraffe, and if I use it, it will just remind me of a giraffe. However, this one, I quite like this one. Again, oh, wait, I might be able to see the Thecraftersworkshop.com. I have no idea what this is called. TCW357S. 
that's just small enough to give me little bits of interest. So let's let's start with a touch of that. Just put a bit of brown down. Um, I can do it with that. So just take some of this, make sure I don't have too much on my sponge and just come in and add areas. And I think maybe one of my mistakes before is the elements I'm adding are just too big of areas. They're too big of elements, should I say. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of liking where that's going. There's a lot going on visually, I must admit. A heck of a lot going on visually on this one. Okay, I don't mind that. That's that sort of unifying it slightly. Let's just put a little bit in the middle there, just to break up that. There doesn't seem to be much areas in this for the eye to rest. But I'm okay. So let's pull in this last one. Now I'm tempted to put it into corners. Obviously it's a corner stencil, but I think I'm just going to use patches or areas of it. So I'm looking up here. And I am going to put this in the corner, but I'm not going to put it in the corner in the manner it was supposed to be put into the corner of. So I'm just going to put it almost like a little bit of wrought ironwork. Ah, I think that's what I was looking for. Right, let's put another bit of it in over here. Now, just because you've got the stencil doesn't mean you need to stencil the whole of the stencil onto it. It's sometimes really nice just to have patches or hints of things within a stencil. Take out some of the elements. Okay. I think I want something just by there. Turn that way on. I'm just running out of paint. I'm glad I decided at the beginning I wasn't going to be doodling on this because I wouldn't even know where to begin if I was doodling onto this one. And thank you for the comments about my doodling. I, you seem to enjoy it. It's, it's not something I'm comfortable with. Um, however, I have taken on board the fact that maybe I would feel more comfortable if I did it more often. So maybe I will do it more often. Maybe I will challenge myself to doodle more. Okay, not hating that. I think that needs something there. I think I have to be really careful at this point because I could really be overdoing this. So if I just try and use little bits that are on my sponge. And I think down here now I've seen the rest of it needs something as well. Again, just using up the surplus, not not trying to do a complete design. Okay, I think... I think I want to stop there. It's become very, 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 very busy for me, which isn't it. It's 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 not something I do. This this is just 
way busy. Not a hundred percent certain how I feel about it, guys. Um, I don't know how it's picking it up on screen, to be honest. It's definitely interesting. It's certainly a lot more interesting than the paper was underneath. Um, I think I've lost the olive and the ice blue that um, Daniela was asking for. Um, and part of me wants to come in and actually lighten some of this back out again. I could come in and pull a bit of it forward with just sponge work, I wonder. Let's go back to the buttermilk. For the lady who said Kerry Yaw was know when to stop, this is a prime example of Kerry not knowing when to stop. Um, let's just try and lighten areas back a little bit. Just, just by taking away some of the starkness of this. Because the eye currently doesn't have that many places to rest on here. And I don't think going over some of the brown we just did is a bad idea. I actually think it's a good idea because it takes it back a little step. Okay, I'm kind of liking this. Let's just... It's giving somewhere to rest. Um, and there are certainly muddy areas where I think that things have just got lost. This looks a bit too muddy. It's still missing a punch of something and I can't quite work out what that punch of something is. Hmm. It's a bit better. I don't know what it's missing. That That's the whole thing. My gut isn't telling me anything. <clears throat> it's an interesting background. I'm not sure. I mean, I could put black onto it. But part of me thinks it isn't black. It needs it. I think it needs this magenta colour. But how it would be added, I, I'm not I'm not sure. It's as if it needs to be quite uniform in its application because this is so, so busy. I'm thinking it needs something that will just give it a structure. I really don't know. Um, I'm struggling with this one, guys. I am struggling. Actually, let's try something else. Okay, that that's... See, that colour would really pull it through. Okay, let's see if I can find a colour that looks the same as this. Right, I pull these two colours out. Purple, crimson. No, purple, plum purple and crimson red. I think a mixture of these two might be what needs to amp this up. Um, the question is, what are we going to amp it up with? Now, if I put anything that's got a random pattern with it, it's going to throw the structure of this completely because it's already really confusing. So I'm looking for something that's squarish or squared or quite formal in its design. <clears throat> right, bricks just wouldn't work. This is not right either. I literally have squares hmm 
not sure that's right. That doesn't, it doesn't feel, that doesn't feel right. I quite like that one. But again, that's quite a busy design. I wonder. That's a really old design by me. I think I called it City Lights years and years ago. Maybe that will do. Let's have that a go. I, I don't know what it's going to be like, sir. So. Right, it's an omen. We're down to our last cut up piece of sponge. So let's cut this bit of sponge a little bit smaller. Not because I'm trying to save the sponge, but because looking at the apertures on there, I'm going to have to go quite small to get them in. Right, I think possibly... reasonably equal amounts of this is going to be what I'm looking for. Right. Let's start reasonably central. So we can get this to be straight. What I'm trying to do is add add a contrast to this to really pump up the drama within the piece. Again, the end of the day, what have I wasted? I've wasted some paint, some paper and some time. Actually, I don't think I've wasted it. Maybe I haven't wasted it. Right, let's bring the piece down here. Sometimes just the addition of a formal structure, as in straight lines, which we're adding here, is enough to solidify the design. I think if I come in, because I didn't realise I've created a border on here, <clears throat> down the side of here, so let's add, try and line that up so I can get it in one go. Okay, I'm liking where this is going, not liking the fact that I'm covering my hands with everything. Right. I'd quite like something there, but not something major. Maybe just, just those two little ones there might be what I'm looking for. And then to balance this, I need something in this corner here. And I think just one of them will be enough. Now, I have a straight line there. I think I want to put a straight line down there as well. Not the whole thing, just, just a smaller area. Maybe just a few a few of the blocks, depends on how accurate I am with my sponge. And maybe just two up by here. Got 
got the paint all over the back of the stencil, which means it's going to be all over the place later. Okay, I think that helped. I really do think that helped. But we've got a little bit of paint left on here. Let's just... Um, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Let's just pull in this stencil and see if I can't add something to some of these pieces. Just because I'm not going to waste paint. Am I still in shot? I am still in shot. So, um, hopefully that was interesting. Um, it's, it's not always easy, guys. I mean, I know that you're very complimentary of my choices of colours and designs and stuff. However, as, as you just witnessed live, well, not live, but in this recording, um, it isn't always easy. Um, it, it isn't something that comes naturally all the time. Uh, Daniela, hopefully that gave you kind of what you were hoping for. Um, I'm not 100% certain I have given you the example you were asking for because I don't think there's enough olive green and ice blue within that design for what you were asking. But I was struggling, really, really struggling to get that colour combination to work for me. Um, I would like to see something in that colour combination though because it is one... I don't naturally put together, and that's, that's painfully obvious by what I've just achieved. Um, so yeah, so interesting, interesting times. So I think we're done. I think I'm done with paint all over my house as well today. Okay, it's an interesting piece of background. Am I loving it? I think it might grow on me. I think if I was to be honest with you, there's a darn good chance I'm going to come in and put some black on that somehow. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if I don't come in and put numbers or something down. Um, <clears throat> because to me, that area looks like it needs something. This area looks like it needs something. And I could quite easily slot something in there because I would like the balance of threes. And I'm wondering if I do it, is it just too much of overkill? You know, we've gone this far, why don't we go all the way? Right, Mars Black. Let's find us our numbers. Not that size numbers, and not that one. I've got a Tim Holtz one here somewhere. But I think... I think this one, I've never used it, obviously, because it's pristine. It won't last that long. Right, has it got a number on it? THS020. That's THS020. Right, let's see what I can do with this then. Right, I can see we're going to need major, major cleanup later here. <clears throat> A little bit of black. The very last bit of sponge. Right, I said I wanted something in there. So let's just do what I did before, put it on, take it off, build up the colour. I don't want too much paint here because if I do, it will seep under. I don't mind if it seeps under a little bit, it sort of adds to the oldish look of this, if that's that's what I'm looking for. So I can just do up to number four without going into number five. Right, so just a little bit of a something there. Um, let's do a five, six down there, I think. Not a five, six, I mean a five, zero. I think I'm due another cup of tea. Five zero there. Right, 
maybe six, seven up there. Okay, that, that added drama to it. And I think at that point we're going to say it's done. Because if I keep going, this hour, this video will be more than an hour long. And I try never to do that to you guys. Even though you don't mind, I try never to do it. Okay. It's interesting. It's, it's not my favourite piece of background, but it's definitely the background. And um, when I eventually cut it up, who knows, it may turn into something I love. So, this is me, I'm Kerry the Crafter, C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, Daniela, and hopefully that was what you were looking for, and the other lovely young lady who said, did it always have to be straight lines? I think I varied in and out of that. I'm, it's my OCD, it's my nature. Um, hopefully somebody loves this, because I'm not sure yet whether I do. So until next time, bye-bye now.